Now on 18 Eyewitness News. A new state senator steps down from the MAC Board of Trustees. Also, more charges for accused kidnapper Jeffrey Shelton. Plus, how Reynolds County's new crime-fighting tool can help drug abusers. All of these stories are coming up. Not a bad day here in southeast Missouri. The weekend's finally here. What will the weather be like? I'll let you know. Coming up in the Storm Tracker Weather Forecast. Coverage you can count on. This is 18 Eyewitness News. Hello everybody, thanks for joining us. I'm Fred Dawkins and here are the top stories that we're working on for you at this hour. Newly elected 3rd District State Senator Gary Romine is stepping down from the Mineral Area College Board of Trustees. Romine tendered his resignation at Thursday's meeting. In the best interest of the college, uh, I would resign from the, the Mineral Area College Board of Trustees so that I can best serve this, uh, their interest in Jeff City and be able to be fully engaged in any debate or any vote that's out there so that it's not a conflict of interest, so that I can do it uh, strictly as a legislator. MAC President Dr. Stephen Kurtz tells 18 Eyewitness News the college is grateful for Romine's services to the school. A lot of projects that we've accomplished over the last five and a half years, the bond issue with the 76% yes vote, a lot of it had to do with his leadership, the Allied Health expansion, maneuvering through the financial crisis of 2008-2009 where we had significant cuts in revenue while still maintaining the quality of education, at least the level of benefits for our employees. Dr. Kurtz also says having a former trustee as a legislator in Jefferson City will benefit Mineral Area and all two-year schools in the region. Well, now Dustin Kopp is here with a look at our first forecast. Is it going to be a good weekend, Dustin? Good evening, Frank. Good evening, everybody. Looking at the current conditions throughout southeast Missouri. We're seeing temperatures not too bad out there. 47 at Festus at St. Genevieve. Fredericktown at 47. Ireton at 49, as well as the Piedmont. Poplar Bluff at 48 and 46 right now in Cape Girardeau. Clear skies at 7 p.m., 43 degrees, 40 by 9 and by midnight. It's going to be on the chilly side, but 37 for your temperature around midnight. We're going to see temperatures in the low 30s tonight, but a nice weekend in store. I'll let you know. Coming up later in weather. Accused kidnapper Jeffrey Shelton is now facing federal child pornography charges. The 45-year-old Pomper Bluff man is charged with two counts of production in connection with the kidnapping of a 10-year-old Kewlin girl October 20th. He also faces possession for images found on his laptop computer after he was arrested on October 24th for kidnapping a five-year-old Poplar Bluff girl. Now, if convicted, the charges carry a maximum penalty of life in prison and a fine of $250,000. All this week, we've reported on Reynolds County's new crime-fighting tool, the MFL 3000. It's a mobile lab that can analyze drugs right down to their formulas. Sheriff Tom Volner tells 18 Eyewitness News the MFL 3000 will dramatically speed up the time frame cases are handled. This means defendants not only have less time to be reoffending, but they can also get treatment sooner. Uh, the methamphetamine is of such a, and heroin are such a powerful drug. Yet if we can catch them and we can move them in, you know, into the drug court even, so that we can get them help in the rehab, you know, they're not going to get, you know, a user is not going to get the help he needs sitting in my jail. So let's not, let's why not move them out into the drug court world where they're monitored and everything else, and make them productive citizens again. And Sheriff Volner tells 18 Eyewitness News the faster they can move on offenders into drug court, the greater the impact will be. Our, our drug court here in Reynolds County has been very successful. And it's proven that the sooner we can get them into that, that system of drug court, the better the success rate. But if we move him in eight months after he offended, and let's say he hasn't been, him or her hasn't been caught anymore, then the problem that we have is, you know, they're out there reoffending and they're not getting the help they need. Sheriff Volner says Reynolds County's drug court will hold graduations in December and January for offenders who have successfully gone through the program. 
Tasty treats, gifts, and holiday decorations will be on sale at the 7th Annual Help the Hungry Bake Sale Saturday. Organizer Chris Landrum tells 18 Eyewitness News all sorts of wonderful aromas will be filling the air. Uh, sometimes there's fresh baked bread that's just been delivered. And we have a cafe that I have not mentioned yet where we sell breakfast and lunch items. So you could be smelling hot cinnamon rolls. We have egg casserole. We have carry out chili. Um, we have a, a full service kitchen for breakfast and for lunch. The Help the Hungry Bake Sale will be at Farmington's St. Joseph Catholic School Gymnasium. The cafe opens at 8 o'clock in the morning with the bake sale starting at 9. And then we usually have everything wrapped up by about 1 or 1.30. So people can have a really fun-filled morning at the bake sale. Last year, the bake sale raised almost $40,000, which was divided between the Farmington Ministerial Alliance and the St. Vincent de Paul Food Pantries. And when we come back on 18 Eyewitness News, the Farmington Ministerial Alliance Thrift Store opens in their new location. That story coming up only on 18 Eyewitness News. For 15 years, Heartland Furniture and Appliance has been the leader in price for restonic bedding. Whirlpool built Crossley appliances, Frigidaire appliances, sofa sets, recliners, accent furniture, and White's metal detectors. Same day delivery with no waiting. We are fast becoming this area's leader in the home furnishing and appliance business. Need a little cash? Payday loans are available in each store. We'd love to have you come see us at one of our three locations on both sides of Main Street in Piedmont, Business 60 in Dexter, and next to Current River Ford in Donovan. Heartland Furniture and Appliance, 223-3200. Watching 18 Eyewitness News with Fred Dawkins and Chief Weathercaster Dustin Kopp. 18 Eyewitness News continues. Friday marked the opening of the Farmington Ministerial Alliance Thrift Store at its new location in the Holly Tree Plaza. Director of Benevolence Nancy Faulkner tells 18 Eyewitness News she hopes the new location will build awareness. We get that uh, we get that a lot that they don't know, realize that they're here. Um, so, you know, that's one thing with the move. We're going to be real visible from the highway. So I'm hoping that that will change that. The thrift store will be open Monday through Saturday from nine in the morning until four in the afternoon. And Nancy says their new location offers twice the space. Um, we're going to be able to expand the thrift store and the food pantry um, and we're going to be able to start taking furniture. So if anybody has furniture out there that they want to donate, um, they can definitely donate it to us because uh, we are going to have room for that now. Nancy says the food pantry will eventually relocate to their Holly Tree Plaza location, but no date for the move has been set. Wapapello Lake wrapped up a very successful 2012 summer season. Park Ranger Andrew Jefferson says this was a bounce back after last year. Things started to improve, especially in contrast to the uh, Great Flood of 2011. All the parks were open. All of our special events uh, were held. Uh, the visitor center stayed open uh, according to schedule. Restoration work continues around the lake. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers just announced the reopening of the Pine Ridge Nature Trail. Last year's flood almost wiped out access to it. And Jefferson says some of the restoration now shows the flood's impact. Highway T um, has been uh, relocated. It is fixed. Um, it's, uh, to me, is better now than it was at first because it actually gives you an opportunity to actually see uh, some of the devastation that had taken place from the flood of 2011. Other trails open at Lake Wapapello include the Lost Creek Nature Trail, the Memory Lane Historic Walk, and the Ozark Trail. As the Missouri Department of Conservation has restored almost 70 elk to the Peck Ranch Conservation Area, tourists coming to watch the animals have had a positive impact on Ellington's economy. Chamber of President Christy Roberts. I'm seeing a lot of people are coming to see that. 
my husband and I just a few weeks ago went over and listened to them bugle over at Peck Ranch and uh, you know that was really awesome to to get to hear them right here. The animals are Missouri's first free-ranging elk in nearly 150 years and Christy says they've been doing a little sightseeing of their own. Now those elk are, lo are wandering off of Peck Ranch and they are wandering right over here to Current River Conservation Area which is just at the edge of Ellington city limits. We've actually had a lot of elk sightings already in the park. Self-guided driving tours to view the elk will be resuming next Wednesday after the close of the firearms deer season. Full details can be found by clicking this story at our website kdkz18.com. A Potosi woman is dead following a single vehicle accident early Thursday morning in Madison County. According to the Missouri State Highway Patrol, 38-year-old Kelly McCubbins was traveling on Highway 67 South, about eight miles south of Fredericktown, when she ran off the right side of the road. She struck a real trailer and bridge guardrail before overturning down an embankment. McGubbins was not wearing a seatbelt and was thrown from her car. Coming up next in weather, you'll get the latest details on your weekend weather forecast. We'll be right back. When someone comes in a mental area's emergency department, our focus is giving them the best treatment in the quickest manner possible. We track every single patient, sending the doctors information before they even walk in the room. We have dedicated x-ray and CT equipment in our emergency department. We don't have to waste any time running all over the hospital. We know that minutes count in an emergency, and you can count on ER Plus at Mineral Area Regional Medical Center. Now, here's your Storm Tracker 18 weather forecast with Chief Weathercaster Dustin Kopp. And welcome back. Let's take a look at weather headlines throughout southeast Missouri. We're going to continue to see mild air build in southeast Missouri for the next several days. Plenty of sunshine to go along with it, but we're still watching for some showers next week. However, it looks like Thanksgiving is going to be on the dry side, which yesterday we were talking about maybe some rain on Thanksgiving. And we're continuing to watch for some frost for tomorrow morning. 47 right now in Festus and St. Genevieve. Frederictown the same. 49 in Piedmont and Van Buren, as well as in Ellington. Poplar Bluff right now at 48 and 46 right now in Cape Girardeau. Currently here at the studio, we have a clear sky at 46 degrees. Feels like 46 out there with current dew point 28. Humidity at 48%. East northeast wind at 5 miles per hour. Going through the day on your Saturday, we'll see plenty of sunshine throughout southeast Missouri. Not a bad day at all, but for tonight, it's going to get chilly. We're going to see temperatures in the lower 30s. 30 here in Farmington, as well as in Festus. 31 in St. Genevieve. Off to our west in Ellington, 32. 29 in Van Buren, and 31 in Poplar Bluff with a clear sky. Sunny tomorrow, high in the upper 50s. Not a bad day at all. Plenty of sunshine. 58 in Potosi, 58 in Festus, 59 in Ironton, 60 down in Van Buren, 59 in Poplar Bluff. The next several days are looking like this throughout southeast Missouri. On your Saturday, once again high in the upper 50s. Same on Sunday with a mostly sunny sky. Partly sunny in 59 on your Monday. Then low 60s for Tuesday and Wednesday with some cloud cover on Tuesday mostly to partly sunny. And then on Wednesday partly sunny. Some clouds on Thursday with high of 61. Then on Friday some showers in the area and temperature around 54. Now look at our weekend forecast, 59 degrees on your Saturday with a low of 31, plenty of sunshine, mostly sunny and 59 on Sunday. That is check out Storm Tracker weather forecast. More details located at kdkz18.com. Just click on the weather tab. Fred, back to you. Coming up in today's two minute tour of Missouri, Volunteers are helping storm victims. Mizzou starts the ban on smoking early, and the Boot Hill voters could have another.
Today's two-minute tour of Missouri starts on the East Coast, where a number of Missourians are still helping out with recovery efforts from Superstorm Sandy. Southern Baptist disaster relief volunteers from the Show Me State are providing food and recovery aid to Keensburg, New Jersey, and nearby areas. They're part of a group of more than 1,000 Southern Baptist volunteers who provided more than one million meals and are completing more than 3,000 recovery jobs, including mud out, tree removal, and debris removal. Well, smoking won't be allowed at the University of Missouri starting on July 1st, six months earlier than originally planned. The Missouri Students Association pushed for the earlier date, saying there was no good reason to wait for the previous January 1st, 2014 deadline. Plans call for an educational campaign to enforce the ban at first, followed by discipline for repeat offenders. The school also plans to hand out free patches or lozenges to help those trying to quit. Well, officials in the boot heel are seeking a new election for a state house seat because some voters received the wrong ballots. Republican incumbent Kent Hampton defeating Tom Dodd, Democrat, by 116 votes for the 150th House District back on November 6th. But Dunklin County officials say it appeared that some voters who live in the neighboring 152nd District were given ballots for the 150th District and vice versa. The apparent mix-ups are being blamed on political redistricting. The county prosecutor on Wednesday filed a petition in circuit court saying there were enough questionable votes to throw the results of the election in doubt. A woman caught in a bizarre robbery of a White Castle in St. Louis has pleaded guilty. In the holdup, 34-year-old Michelle White flashed a red toy gun at the drive through attendant and gave her a note that read, quoting now, Give me your money or I will shoot you. Then she crawled through the window, nearly getting stuck, and took $617. She was captured after a customer in the drive through line jotted down White's license plate and gave it to police. She'll be sentenced on January 4th. And that's your two-minute tour of Missouri for today. Coming up in today's Your Life segment on 18 Eyewitness News, a unique idea for building your family and your community at the same time. Coming up today on Focus on the Family. Your Health is brought to you by Parkland Health Mart Pharmacy. Parkland Health Mart Pharmacy of Deloge, where caring for you and about you is our business. From taking time to explain your medication, offering a caring touch to a full line of medical equipment, supplies, and diabetic shoes. We'll help you understand your options and assist you with Medicare drug plan enrollment with a comfortable waiting area, convenient drive through or free delivery. Caring for our neighbors is our business. Your locally owned Parkland Health Mart Pharmacy just off of Highway 67 at the Deloge exit. Most of us with kids know the scene. One person in front of the computer, another watching TV, the family not connecting or communicating. Psychologist and family expert Dr. Bill Meyer has an innovative suggestion for how to build some family time, togetherness, and enrich the community all at the same time. Chicken soup. Are you looking for something to nurture the soul of your family? Well, I was kind of raised doing community service, so it's kind of a comfort zone for me. Peter and Suzanne Long wanted their daughter to know the value of giving. So at an early age, they began taking the focus off themselves by meeting the needs of others. It's one of the greatest needs we have right now is hunger. We have a lot of people who are really hungry in our community, and just knowing that we can make a difference is awesome. Along the way, they discovered that making a difference in their community was also making a difference in their home. It's another way for us to show each other that we love each other and good quality time with each other. It's a time where, you know, they can share, they can laugh, they can learn, and they can grow. You know, without the volunteers, we would not be able to survive. Starting early is key. Teaching young children the value of volunteer work not only develops good habits for a lifetime, but it often gets passed on to the next generation. For families to really establish that as a, as a lifestyle pattern in their children will have a huge ripple effect on, on the country and the community as a whole. It's great. It's an opportunity to serve, make a difference, help out the community. They learn something. They teach us something at the same time. So it's all around thing. Everybody accomplishes something. 
So if you're searching for a way to draw your family close, why not consider taking on some community projects together? To find out about the needs in your area, just call your local community center or church. I'm sure they'll be very glad to hear from you. I'm Dr. Bill Meyer with Focus on the Family. For more valuable information on life's issues, relationships, and family, please visit our website, kdkz18.com, and click on the Focus on the Family link. Today's Plugged In Movie Review looks at the new movie, Lincoln. We here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain. The movie Lincoln takes place in the early weeks of 1865 as the 16th President of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, faces his greatest struggle in office. That this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. That government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth. The country is in the throes of a massive civil war, but the rebellious South is exhausted and ready to plead for an end to the conflict. The president believes that with a little luck, slavery could be wiped out through an act of Congress, the 13th Amendment. But there's a catch. End the war and the Confederate South will insist on preserving slavery. Free the slaves and the South will have no incentive to lay down its arms. It's either the amendment or this Confederate peace. You cannot have both. But is that true? Is there some chess-like move that the president can make, some deft act of political maneuvering he can undertake that will change the course of American history? This well-acted, taut political drama goes beyond the typical textbook view of the principled, idealistic President Lincoln we all think we know. Director Steven Spielberg examines the shrewd and politically savvy side of a man who rose to power in one of the most important periods of our nation's history. It's a film with a lot to like. On the other hand, harsh language is fairly prevalent and bloody images tend to drag some of the positives into the mud of the battlefield. So I'll give Lincoln three political ploys out of five for family friendliness. For more on this film or specific parenting help for your family, go to FocusOnTheFamily.com. Plugging you into the movies, I'm Cheryl Wilhelmy for Focus on the Family's Plugged In Movie Review. For more valuable information on current movies, DVD releases, as well as music, games, and TV shows, please visit our website, kdkz18.com, and click on the Plugged In link. And coming up in sports, a Battle of the Tigers highlights the first night of the A.V. Thanksgiving Tournament. The Rams host the Jets Saturday at the Edward Jones Dome, and Mizzou tries to become bowl eligible for the eighth straight season. Attention, Accutane warning. If you have Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, or inflammatory bowel disease, it may have been caused by the acne drug Accutane. Accutane victims have recently been awarded millions of dollars. Do not delay. There are time deadlines to file a claim. Call the Rely On Group now to be connected with an experienced attorney. There is absolutely no risk on your part. You don't owe us a penny unless we are successful. Call the Rely On Group at 800-698-3105. If you have diabetes and you're on Medicare, call now to get the new talking meter. These new meters are more accurate, they're easier to use, and the best news is you don't have to prick your fingers anymore. Areva makes it simple. They bill Medicare directly. There are no upfront costs, and they deliver your supplies right to your door for free. For more information, call one. This is Sports Zone, only on 18 Eyewitness News. The first round of the 86th annual Arcadia Valley Thanksgiving Tournament will feature a Monday night battle of the Tigers when third seeded Clearwater takes on sixth seeded Arcadia Valley. This will be Clearwater coach Lewis Bell's 11th AV tournament, and he says it's a great way to tip off the season. It's uh, you know it's new. It's the it's the first basketball games of the year. Uh, everybody gets excited, uh, big crowd, so it's it's easy to come up and play and. Uh, 
you know, all, all our players, and, and I'm sure all the players on all the teams in the tournament are, are real excited about getting going and getting started and, and looking forward to the Arcadia Valley Tournament each year. Coverage of the AV Tournament starts Monday afternoon at 5 on Froggy96 and Froggy96Online.com or watch the games live in sparkling crystal clear resolution on KDKZ18.com. Two three-win teams will battle Sunday when the Rams host the New York Jets. But St. Louis has already won the battle of perception. The Rams are considered a team on the rise, with Jeff Fisher's squad competitive in every game. The Jets are viewed as a group of underperformers with a struggling quarterback. Fans at the Edward Jones Dome can see the Jets put Tim Tebow under center for a series the first time this year. Mizzou wraps up their home schedule Saturday when they host the Syracuse Orange. Both teams bring identical 5-5 five five records to the contest. The Tigers will pay tribute to 18 seniors who will be suiting up for the last time at the zoo. And a win would not only send them off the right way, but it would also make Mizzou bowl eligible for a school record 8th straight season. That's the look in sports. Fred and Dustin, back to you. Let's take a quick check at that forecast for the rest of this evening. We're going to see clear skies. Nice evening, 43 degrees at 7 p.m., 40 by 9. But by midnight, it's going to be a chilly one, 37 degrees. That does it for 18 Eyewitness News tonight at 6. The news doesn't stop here, though. Just go to our website, kdkz18.com, for your latest news, weather, and sports 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Hope you have a good evening. News Watch is next. We'll be right back here on 18 Eyewitness News tonight at 10 o'clock. Do you see news happening in your neighborhood? Email us at news at kdkz.tv.